Okay, so we're we're doing our our regular midweek howl. Okay, we just we apologize to everybody who may have just listened to the Patreon midweek howl. We, we went we got a little dark, a little dark there, but we're we're going to do better on this episode. That's that's free to everybody because I'm starting with the news of the day. You want to know what the news of the day is in my world? Yeah, let's go. What is it? Tanya Tucker got elected to the Country Music Hall of Fame today. Amen. How about that? How about that? How about that? I uh, the last couple years she has been up for it, and um, I, I can't remember which last. How year could the they year. not? How could they not? You know, vote for because now you've upset a, me. How did they not it, vote for her before now? Well, there's actually a lot of really great people, great artists that have not made it. So yeah. they can only take so many at a time, or what? They took um, they took Patty Loveless. Uh, they took uh, songwriter Bob McDill, who just has a fantastic catalog that would be probably some stuff that you would like. And then okay. Tanya. And uh, I think I, I don't think they took any more than three, but um, it comes down to some really hard choices every year. And I know, like a couple years ago, she and I were texting about it, and she's like, you know, I'm. You know, I don't expect to get in. And I'm like, come on, you deserve it. She's like, well, it's not it's not up to me, you know. So I think she understands that she had a place in in country music royalty. But at the same time, you know, to get elected and and actually have it happen. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You know, so. So there there's our there's our upbeat, positive news of the day. Yes. No. You. Uh, Yeah. Well, yes. But, you know, I'm just in a melancholy mood over certain things. (laughs) And I just, I'm trying to figure out why it hadn't happened before now. She was freaking Delta Dawn, for Christ's sake. Yeah, when she's like 14, 13 or 14. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is, um, I mean, if anybody has not read her biography, and I can't, or autobiography, and I cannot remember, I got it. I actually have it. And Christy sat and read it. Christy is a very modest person, okay? She is, um, you know, just... Sweet, salt of the earth, but super modest, right? She she get done reading a chapter of Tanya's book and her face would be blushed because Tanya lives some stuff, you know, with the whole Glenn Campbell and, and all that. I mean, she lives some oh, Glenn stuff. Glenn Campbell's gr- groomer or something? So what, what happened? Well, she she had a relationship with Glenn Campbell. When she was a little was, kid? Oh, no, no, no. She was in her 20s. Oh. She was in her 20s, but it was very volatile. You know, I think there's a lot of drug use um, in the past. and Allegedly. And, uh, no, Tanya writes about it in the book. <laughs> I'm saying in the book. It's her own words. It, it's very, um, you know, it's, 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 it's all out there. It's a great, it's a really great book. And it's a testament of how she survived that and is now, you know, kind of in the renaissance of her career. And, uh, you know, having won a Grammy and stuff. It still sounds great. She sounds great. Um, she's got more. I mean, she's out doing stuff, riding horses and doing concerts. And, you know, and she's 10, 10, 12 years older than me. I feel like I can barely come home after the mail route and do anything. And she's, That's because she stayed in shape these whole time. She stayed in shape. You know what she's, I mean? You let yourself go. I know. I know. Ma- just, movement is medicine, right? Um, I try, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try something new here for the next couple months when I'm sitting there late at night and I start to feel like, man, I'd like to go get a snack. I'm going to get up, put my tennis shoes on and go down and get on the treadmill for 20 minutes. And I'm going to try to punish myself for thinking I need a snack. And instead of getting that snack, I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll get in a little bit better shape. And number one, I'll be exercising. And number two, I won't be eating that terrible you know, bowl of potato chips or whatever it is, you know. So I don't have a whole lot of vices, and, and that's a bad. That's the bad thing is, is snacking at, late at night. That's uh, and that, and that'll kill you. That'll kill you just as soon as probably doing drugs. You think the snacking? You mean the ice cream I eat every night? I shouldn't do. Well, listen, you're under a lot of a uh, lot of pressure. I can. Well, see. Well, it's hard to be me. <laughs> no, no, no. That's why I'm not. That's why I'm not getting on you about the ice cream. But, right. But that's the truth. Once you can reach our age and, and stuff and, and maybe some of our uh, medical history, that's probably just as bad as doing 
drugs or drinking or smoking or whatever, you know, can't be much better for you. Hmm. Gosh, I just made it depressing again. Now you can't eat cherries. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just, that's exactly right. I'm sitting here going, how does this, how does this <laughs> make you feel better? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, it's baseball season. How about that? I know. I got my kid up at practice right now. The MLB kicked off the other day. Yeah. Is, um, so. I don't like the big pitch clock thing. You don't like the pitch clock thing? Well, well, well let me ask you this. So, do you, so your son plays baseball, but is he a baseball fan? Like, does he follow the major nope. league guys? Nope. Does, really? I tell I want, you what, I'm going to tell you, my kid, some of the kid people in my family are dark skinned because I have two grandmas on both sides that were Native Americans. Okay. So like my dad, my uncle, my dad's dad, I'm pretty dark. You haven't been around me much in person, especially in summertime. I get pretty dark. My brother that just passed away, I mean, they call, his nickname when we were growing up was Buckwheat. Okay. So my youngest boy has got that olive skin and coal black eyes. And we were laughing the other night that when he was a baby in his little baby carriage, my uncle Larry would, they called him a Pujols baby. Is that Albert Pujols? Cause my wife's St. Louis Cardinals fan always wears <laughs> St. Louis shirts or whatever. And she said, he go, he used to say, you've been hanging out with Pujols looking at that baby. Cause he was a big baby, nine pound baby. You know what I mean? Little, little, good, little good, God. no bean nine pound baby. And they, they should call it Pujols baby. So we were making fun of him last night about being a Pujols baby, and he said, who's Albert Pujols? What? Mm-hmm. So. And, and, he, and you're living the same Louis. Hey, like, and he's up here at the park right now on first base as a six-foot-one, 195-pound eighth grader, and he doesn't know who Albert Pujols is. I said, see, that's who you need to be modeling your career out of. How can he not know who Albert Pujols is? Well, Pujols, you know, he came back last year for the Cardinals, but – Think about it. For the last ten years, the bulk of my son's life, he was out in out in oh, California oh. being. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that answers your question, right? That answers my well, yeah, because you know, like when we grew up, I think baseball was probably the prominent sport, mm -hmm. right? And it and it has really, you know. Then I think it went. The you know the NFL was always pretty popular. I think the NBA had a really big res resurgence in popularity there for a while. I think, you know, I think the NBA is kind of, it's kind of hard to follow the NBA anymore. I mean, I don't know who half those guys are because uh, with all these kids, you know, with, there's a whole generation of kids, especially in the NBA, that went to the NBA and didn't play four or five years of college basketball to where you got to know them, you know. By the time Ralph Sampson and Patrick Ewing got out of college basketball, you had seen them play 30 times and knew everything about them. And then you could follow, you know, you followed him into the pro. Well, some of these guys don't even play a year, you know. And Why do you think lot, that is? Well, because they allow them to not play a year. It's the only sport that you don't have to, I think maybe you have to play two years. But there for a while, they let high school kids go, you know. I, at the, know, at one, I think when LeBron went, it was the only high school guys were like uh, Daryl Dawkins, Moses Malone. And then there was a guy from our area that actually played in the pros in the but, 50s. Football and basketball have a clock that they're going to be out of. I mean, they're going to run out of time, and the game's going to be over. You think people, the kids just uh, I totally enjoy. do. I mean, not just the kids. It's everybody now because, you know, it's like when I – you remember the uh, House of Cards? Did you ever watch House of Cards? I did not, but I know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, I was watching House of Cards back when I was flying a lot, and the first thing I noticed now, because I'm a reader – and I'm not a consumer of of TV as much. You know what I mean? When I was working a lot, I just I read books and stuff. I don't, you know, I don't come home and sit like you, you know, watch movies with your significant other. I don't because, well, we just we just don't watch the same things. So anyhow, <laughs> I found myself <laughs> bouncing around like a pinball in house cards. So. I had read an article about how they've had to compress almost all movie scenes or TV series scenes 
to less than two and a half minutes now because kids cannot focus on a long, you know, where they're not watching Gone with the Wind with Scarlett O'Hare taking 30 minutes to tell him she don't give a damn. Are you serious? I have not seen that. So, so they have- I sat there and I watched it, and sure enough, there's not a scene in 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 in, in, in there's not a scene in any of the episodes in uh, uh, what at that time was the number one show, House of Cards. There's not a scene longer than two and a half minutes. Most of them are about one forty to uh, two minutes. Even it's just one thing after another thing. After you know what I mean? So. That's what the problem is. So if you start watching Big Bang Theory or any of these other shows, they just bang, 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 cut, intercut, intercut, cut, 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 intercut, slice in something else. Boom, the show's over. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity. So it's almost like a video game. It's well, it's like three minutes, like the majority of they say if you want to be on YouTube, you gotta, you know, they somehow filter those movies less than three minutes or whatever. Your show is less than three minutes. I guess. I don't know. I did not I, I didn't even realize that. But that's uh, why you're that's why they're not buying your screenplays, man. You're too you're taking too long. Too long. Too long. Which is why the guy which is why the guy on the show I, we were talking about that I've been a guest on the last couple of weeks, he told me last night, quit telling stories. You're taking too long to tell a story. Yeah, but that, you know, I, well, first of all, kids aren't listening to us. I think he was jealous because he can't tell a story. Ooh, I, I'm not going to argue with that. You, you know, know, you know, you got to know your I role. I want to tell man. him because he's in California. I want to say, hey, Hollywood's full of Jewish accounts that can't tell stories. That's okay. Just embrace it. <laughs> and finance the people who can. It's okay. Uh, finance right? the people that can. Don't uh, cut me off, bro. Oh, oh, oh gosh. I'm not, now are those uh, are those episodes up on YouTube? For I guess people? I don't. It was a live stream because hmm. I asked him on the very first one. I said, "Hey, you want to cut that out?" And he goes, "Dude, this is live." I said, oh, well, there you go. I mean, I guess, right? We're rolling. Wow. You on a live stream? I don't even know. I was on a live stream, and, and they I, I set in for one, and they wanted me to do the next week because they are they just wanted me to come back. And it was either because I was popular or they were making fun of me, and I don't know which. So, <laughs> what? So, I called in. I called in, and you got a code to get into the gatekeepers. and But I did it like I do this with no video. Right? Yeah. And he says, hey, man, can you turn your video on? And I said, well, I mean, I, I can get my laptop. It's got a camera, but my desktops don't have no camera. But well, we really need that. And I said, for one, well, it's a live stream people want to people want to see, right? Now, these guys remind me of, you know, when you see these contributors on, like, Fox News or CNN or whatever, and they got these I love me walls behind them or an American flat. You know, they got these rooms prepped full of this stuff, right? Yeah. And these guys, the one guy's got the Coliseum. He's got a green screen. He's got the Coliseum behind him. I'm waiting for Caesar to come out and kill some lions. <laughs> and the other guys have got this, you know, national security. You know, they got all the stuff. And so I turn my thing on, and I got to look at my background. And and, and I don't know what people are staring at, at uh, the two electric guitars, the two BB guns, and the samurai sword I got against the wall here, or the barbecue stain on my shirt. <laughs> because I'm not used to this. I'm radio, baby. I don't do this stuff. You don't do live stream. No, I don't do live stream. <laughs> oh, um, and I started telling you that I I was a guest on a podcast last week called That's So Fringy. Okay, cringy, fringy. Oh, fringe. Yeah. Okay, yep, fringe. Fringe, as is on the fringe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, maybe it should have been that so cringy. I, I think I even made that joke. 
But anyway, so I saw, I wanted to listen to a couple of their episodes. And um, great. The people that host it are great. Okay. Really good. Uh, I enjoy listening to them. But they had this guy on. It goes by the name of Flat Earth Dave. Okay. And he is selling the idea that, by the way, millions and millions of people uh, subscribe to is that the earth is flat. Right. You told me that earlier. I told you. That. So, so we did. So I wanted to kind of, <laughs> I wanted to kind of see what you, because I can't, I, because I, I talked to them before we got on about that episode. And I explained this, the guy wanted to come on to our show. And he, and he, here's what's funny is the parallel between him and the uh, flat earth society back in like the 1800s. Like this is when this really took root. There was a guy who's kind of a, for lack of a, I'm just going to call him like a PT Barnum guy. Okay. Who made this big deal about, you know, the earth being flat and this, and he put up, a, I think it was 30, 30 pounds or something or a hundred pounds back then to anybody that could prove him wrong. All right. And of course, one of the scientists of the day took him out and they did an experiment on in the river that proved him wrong. Well, he refused to pay and then spent the rest of his life bad mouthing the scientist that showed that he was wrong. Well, this flat earth Dave, he has the same kind of deal where he has three bitcoins. And if you can prove him wrong, you get a bitcoin. Get a bitcoin. And um Which is fake, by the way, but go ahead. Well, but it still has a value yeah. to some people. Wish I had and, a few thousand of them. Yes, so do I. So do I. Um, but, um, the, uh, uh, his, th like this whole spiel on the podcast is essentially all these conspiracy theories as to why, you know, why the earth is, is, is not round, but he doesn't say why it's flat. Okay. Because he wants you to go to his YouTube channel and watch two weeks a video every day that on his YouTube channel, and then you know uh, another like little movie, and then while you're at it, go to his merch store, buy some merch. Amen. And it's like, oh my gosh, what a ruse this guy is running. But but one of the one of the things that he uh, said was is that it the flat Earth supports but the Bible supports the flat Earth, okay, and it helps prove the existence of God. And I'm like, no, wait a second. How does this? Well, it literally took me five seconds to Google what does the Bible say about the earth? And there's like four references to the earth being a spherical, uh, you know, object. And I'm like, this is just nonsense. Just such nonsense. And there are millions and millions and millions of people that buy into this. And he, you know, and, and of course, you know, one of our, our good friend, Stacy Brown, he thinks the moon landing was fake. And that's part one of the, you know, one of the things that they throw out there. Um, but their other, one of their big things is that Antarctica, the Arctic Circle and Antarctica, that they are basically just walls of ice. And if you were able to scale those walls of ice, you would see these vast worlds of just so much natural resources that uh you know we gas and gold and nothing it would all be free because there'd be there's so much natural resources at our disposal just beyond those ice walls that uh we could live for free just and, like uh, uh you know the tom cruise movie uh uh was it starts with an o oblivion oblivion i didn't see i'm not i haven't seen so that was the one you were saying that just i don't the, know i i I don't, I don't even, I'm, I'm speechless with some of this stuff, man. But, but then as I told you earlier today, what's the difference? You know what I mean? We've let this as a world, we've let these people decide whatever makes them feel good is right. Perception is reality. So if you want to be a boy, you can be a girl, or if you're a girl, you can be a boy. If you're this, you can be that. You know what I mean? If you're, I mean, if you're Hispanic, you're, you're whatever you can, you cross the Rio Grande. Now you're an American baby. You know so you're I mean? saying, so you're saying, so, hey, why don't we just let the flat earthers be the flat earthers as long as they don't have to argue it in school? Hell, well, let's just make teachers take whatever answer you write, because, hey, you know, in my brain, <laughs> that's that's my equation. Or, you know, why did numbers have to, you know, be numbers? 
Why does two always have to equal two? You know, we could help the damn uh, math scores if we just let everybody decide what numbers mean to them. <laughs> That's true. That's you true. Know? I can't argue that. I can't argue let's that. Just, yeah, let's just the world off the hook. Let's just call it world off the hook. You know, it was off the hook for a couple million years before the Dark Ages and the church and, and a bunch of badasses harnessed them. So let's just go back for a couple hundred generations until some badasses show back up. Until like Attila the Hun and, and those guys? Is that yeah. Who, well, I mean, yeah. something between, you know, General General Patent and a damn General Patent and a, with a samurai sword and a, I don't know. But yeah, Alexander, at some point. Let's, let's wait for Alexander the Great to show back up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> until he tames these people and tells them, my foot is a foot, right? <laughs> but... But the real question is: Is Alexander the Great want to, going to want to conquer everything if he if he just thinks the world's flat? He, he I don't think he even opined whether it was flat or not. <laughs> you know, he was like a U.S. Marine. There's either Marines and targets. <laughs> there you go. He, you know what I mean? There's either people. You know, you know, everybody was out there. Every every new land, every new place was just another target for him. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs>